Have you ever played a shooter game and killed someone in a funny way? Maybe you hit someone with a very obscure weapon, or even killed them with an ability that typically doesn't kill. Well, many shooters showcase these kills by showing unique icons or text. For example, Valorant, an incredibly popular first-person shooter, has many different icons for different scenarios that range from headshots through a wall to even killing with a 5 damage tripwire. That's very embarrassing. Splatoon is no different, and throughout the three games, there have been many rare death screens a player can get in multiplayer matches. To clarify, a death screen in Splatoon is the little pop-up that appears after you get splatted in a match, showing the weapon you died to and the cause of the death. So all of this made me wonder, what is the rarest kill screen you can get throughout Splatoon? I have no clue. So let's find out. In Splatoon, all of the main weapons get their job done, and although some are more annoying than others, like really annoying, they all are common enough to die to. What's unique is that sometimes these weapons can kill you in other interesting ways. Starting with our list of uncommon death screens is getting crushed by the ink brush and octobrush. Yes, getting crushed, not splatted. These weapons, similar to rollers, can paint the ground by brushing along. Also like rollers, you can run over people. Well, run over is not really the right phrase. Crushing someone with an ink brush is rare because of the measly 20 damage one hit can do. Hitting someone multiple times is basically impossible unless you're fighting a 5 year old who just got the game for Christmas. The Octobrush is the least uncommon due to doing 25 damage instead of Ink Brush's 20, but that's just 5 damage points more and doesn't mean much in the long run anyway. The Ink Brush Nouveau, however, is the most uncommon of them all, due to Nouveau's kit being complete garbage compared to the original Ink Brush. Almost nobody uses it in multiplayer anyway, so dying to one is almost always a complete accident. Hey, to all 7 of you Splatbrella users out there, did you know that there was a unique death screen for squishing someone with the Brella? I forgot this weapon existed! Despite all that, if you manage to run someone over with a whopping 30 damage, you can give them a unique death screen. And shame! But it doesn't stop there. The undercover Brella can also crush you. Yes, apparently this thing, as weak as it is on its own, can crush you. I don't even know how you would allow yourself to die to that. Although main weapons have a few rare kill screens, they can eventually happen every now and then if you're not paying attention. If we want to look at even more uncommonness, we'll have to go to the sub weapons. Many sub weapons that aren't a variant of a bomb usually don't kill you. Some, like the point sensor and squid beacon, are support for your team and don't do any damage. But a few other supportive subs can kill you once a month if you're very lucky. Like a splash wall. Why would you run into that? The sprinkler, designed to help paint the stage, can damage opponents with its droplets. Dying to a sprinkler, as said by Marina, is one of the most embarrassing ways to die because of the rarity. In all of my years of playing the series, I have gotten it to kill once. However, if luck is on your side, it is possible to splat someone at full health with a sprinkler, by placing it directly underneath them, but if that happens, you should probably close the game and go buy a lottery ticket instead. Despite everything I've said about how rare the sprinkler kill screen is, I think getting splatted by an angle shooter is even more rare, solely because of how rare seeing an angle shooter is anyways. Not only does it just have three main weapons paired with it, it's a worse point sensor, it does 30 damage if you manage to hit someone with it. The problem is that there's no reason to use one to finish a kill. Because using another attack from your main weapon is better, faster, and doesn't drain half of your ink tank. There is one sub-weapon I haven't talked about yet. It's the curling bomb! Although the explosion is the main part of it. I mean, it's, it's literally a bomb. You can hit people while it slides on the ground. If you manage to kill someone by doing 20 damage to a grounded player whose controller just died, they get the special text that says, Hit by Curling Bomb. Pretty rare, all things considered. 
Now, that's all the weapon-related death screens, but what if I told you we haven't even scratched the surface of rare death screens? It's time we start looking at other modes. Splatoon 3 introduced a mode only playable during Splatfests, Tricolor Turf War. In case you need a refresher, Tricolor Turf War has a team of four defending the middle of a map against two teams of two. It's just regular Turf War, but a unique aspect is that the main team of four defends an Ultra Signal. If either of the other teams obtain the Ultra Signal, they spawn in what's called the Sprinkler of Doom. It's just a giant sprinkler. However, just like the regular sprinkler, it is possible to die from the droplets and gain a unique kill screen, despite the low damage it does. This specific instance is rarely seen due to tricolor battles only being available during a Splatfest, which happen every two months for one day. Speaking of Splatfest, do you remember Splatoon 2? Just like Splatoon 3, Splatoon 2 has unique features for Splatfest, mainly exclusive stages known as Shifty Stations. Each stage has its own gimmick that no other stage has. And some of them are, uh, pretty weird. But what's important is that some of them can kill you! Now, there are a lot of shifty stations, with a total of 24. So I'm just going to go over the more rare ones in this list. Now, all we have to do is open Splatoon 2 for the first time in three years, and go through all of the... Oh. Yeah, so apparently, somehow, my Splatoon 2 save data just disappeared. And so now I have to restart everything. No one plays this game anymore anyway. Anyways, first up on our shifty station list are cannons. Cannons can only be found on the shifty station named Cannon Fire Pearl. And although they are literally just cannons you can shoot out of, the rarity of playing on this stage was still limited to one Splatfest. Same thing with Flutters, which are moving machines that instantly kill you if you touch them. They were taken from the story mode of Splatoon 2, and added into the shifty station, named Flutters in the Attic. Like I said before, these gimmicks are designed to kill you, but were exclusive to one Splatfest each. You know what's not supposed to kill you though? Ink Furlers! Yeah, apparently that's what they're called. Ink Furlers are platforms you can swim on if you shoot them, but for some stupid reason, you can die to the edge after it unrolls. Look, I can understand dying to cannons and other things, but dying to this is just sad. Of course, we can't discuss all these things without mentioning everyone's favorite, Rolonium. Rolonium is basically a giant projectile you can launch at people. It doesn't even one-shot you, so it's not that good in the first place. It's mainly used just to paint the ground. These are all funny death screens to get, but the reason why they're rare is because Splatoon 2 is dead. It's impossible to get any of these shifty stations in a public lobby anymore, because Splatoon 2 had its final Splatfest in 2019. So these are what I consider some of the rarest to ever get. With the final Splatfest in Chaos vs. Order, Nintendo created a special shifty station that features two very unique death screens that you can't find anywhere else. The first of these are multiple bombs you can find throughout the map called Hyper Bombs. They're pretty simple, they just explode when you shoot them. But I guess the developers thought that was pretty boring, so they added one special thing about this stage that's, um, definitely something. You see, when the timer hits one minute and everyone is in the final stretch, Pearl literally descends from the heavens, pulls out a giant megaphone, and screams at you. Yeah. This weapon, called the Princess Cannon, can be obtained from either team and one-shot anyone. With these two final death screens, we have gone through some of the most obscure in the entire series. And with that, we can finish our list of the rarest death screens in Splatoon. But we're not done yet. We have gone over dying to weapons in weird ways and unique hazards during Splatfest, but there's still one more death screen that I think is the rarest in all of Splatoon. This death screen is so rare 
that when researching for this video, I could barely find anyone who had died to it. It doesn't even involve a shifty station, or anything too obscure. In fact, it is technically possible to still achieve it in a public lobby. In Splatoon 1 and 2 specifically, there is one particular stage known as Anchovy Games that features a unique gimmick. There are platforms you can find that move, but only if you hit the little fans on them with ink. Everyone who has played Splatoon knows how this stage works, but they probably didn't know that there are little tiny ink droplets that spray out of the fan. And yep, you guessed it. You can die to them! I didn't even know these things could hurt you. What makes this the most rare in the entire series, simply put, is that you have to be playing Splatoon 1 or 2, not 3, because Splatoon 3 doesn't have anchovy games, have anchovy games playable during the map rotation, stand in a specific spot next to a propeller, have an enemy shoot the propeller, and hopefully die to the low damage ink from the propeller before they kill you instead. With all these factors and how almost no one is going to let you just stand there, I think it's safe to say that you'll never die from this. Genuinely, if you're a Splatoon player and you have gotten this death screen before in a public lobby, please tell me, because you just died in the most embarrassing way possible. And here, we finally have our answer to my question that started this video. What is the rarest death screen in Splatoon? A literal fan. And now we have finished the rarest death screen tier list, ranging from simple weapons to things that make you wonder if you're actually good at this game. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully this video doesn't get outdated by future Splatoon updates, but we'll just see. I like making these, so hopefully I can make more in the future about other games too.